Social psychologists think about how similar people are. Basically, most people act the same in most situations. This does not talk about someone who has depression, because guess what? Most people don't have depression. This does not talk about genius, because guess what? Cognitive psychologists deal with that because most people don't have, aren't geniuses. That's the abnormal. Usually science wants to study the abnormal. Social psychologists want to study us. The people in the middle. Now, some of you might be really well adjusted emotionally. Off the charts. Some of you might have trouble taking a, someone say, a, some, even the smallest criticism. And you go run away, hide in a corner, make a fort out of the couch cushions because no one understands you. But most of us are somewhere in between that. If most people act the same in most situations, that means they can be helped. They can be taught. They can be inspired. They can be encouraged by putting just the right amount of social pressure. Do you all smell that? Because some of you, I can see your little evil souls are burning. You're saying, ooh, if I could help someone, I could also manipulate them. Is that what advertisers do? I think so. Check out how powerful this is. Advertisers can sell to millions of people because we're all the same. We all want the same things. You know what we want? This is where it gets truly sick. We want what they tell us to want. Where did you get the idea to want that shirt, those shoes that you really want? You come up with it on your own? No, that idea slipped in your mind through the back door. This is very powerful. Social pressure is almost impossible to resist. And so like, no, ah. I'd resist it, that's what you're thinking right now. Really? This is the paradigm that there is no personality. You're not you. You're not special. In one situation, you'll be this way. In another situation, you'll be the other way. You can't make me conform, Mr. Swope. People say, Dr. Swope, I don't believe this. I'm special. Oh, really? Here's my problem as a teacher. Well, I got a lot of problems as a teacher, but okay. here's my real problem with a teacher. This is a powerful concept I really want you to understand. I want you to agree to. I want you to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that statistically you're just like everyone else. Given the right social situation, you will conform to good, you will conform to bad. There's no difference between you and someone who riots. There's no difference between you and those people in the 1930s in Germany. Uh huh, yeah, there is. The problem I have is this How do I teach you the concept without actually harming you? I'm not talking physical harm, that comes later. I'm talking, I know you're like, what? Wait till we get to the sensation unit in pain. I need some volunteers. What I'm saying is all of us think we're special. All of us think we're noble. We can resist any amount of social pressure. What if I showed you that it's really easy to get someone to cave? And the problem is the people who kind of hold on to it the most, like, no way, I'd never cave. I know what's right. I know my morals. And I show them very quickly how easy it is to cave. They kind of lost some of themselves. The reason I kind of took a serious turn right here talking about that and harming people is because there's been some pretty bad experiments or experiments that went really bad. They weren't really well designed to begin with. And you find out how easy it is to get a nice person to do some horrible crap. And a lot of us, the temptation is, oh, well, that's those people. I'd never do it. Well, that's kind of what I'm talking about. We would do it. Okay, I know that we are serious note takers, even though you hate taking notes. And we're going to discuss why that is. But I guarantee that if I were to go and touch your notebook, I'm going to go mess up your notes. Are you nervous? Why'd you jerk away? Do you like your notes? No. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you don't know what to think, do you? People hate not knowing. So I want you, note takers, ready? You're going to break some rules. Let's do it. <coughs> two lines high. Can you write this sentence taking up two lines in your notebook? Will you dare? Will you break the rules? You already wrote it? You can't do it? It's against the rules? No, you can't. I can't it. One of the themes of this class is, of this unit, one of the themes of this unit is that people hate not knowing. You don't know what to do. And that's okay. So what do you do? You look for clues. You look for cues. Not knowing, one example of that is guilt. Ooh, mental conflict of what you did versus what you should have done. You can't change the fact, unless you have a time machine, Mr. Peabody, you can't go back in time. People hate not knowing, and when you don't know what to do, you look for clues. When you look for clues, you're gonna look for persuasion. You want to be talked into stuff. Maybe you don't believe me. Maybe, just maybe, you've ever skipped a class. Raise your hand, be honest. 
What if it's like, ah, I got you, I'm gonna turn you in. No, but seriously, let's say you've skipped a class. Did you ever skip a class by yourself? No. Oh, is that pretty sad? Are you gonna be in the bathroom, sitting on the toilet, smelling urine for a whole class period? That's no good, no one likes that. Someone's sad in the back, like, I did it. So my point is this. Do you talk someone into being bad with you? Is that more fun? Or they talk you into it? All right, fair enough. Let's look at the idea of conformity. It feels good when other people are doing what you're doing. You don't believe me? Think about that time, I don't know, maybe a year ago, a couple of years ago, you were in a class even worse than this one with a professor that was even freaking more psychotic than me. And that professor was all, like, all right, you smirked, all of you have an eight page essay due tomorrow. And you're like, that's not fair, fair, nine pages. Or that professor says, half of you are laughing, all of you have detention. And then one person stands up, that's not fair, you can't do that. You said here, and now, and then another person, yeah, you said that. Oh, and then the third person joins in. And then number four, the whole class is like, yeah, teacher. You know what I'm talking about? It's like a magical moment, like fight the power. That feels good. That feels good when people have your back. Everyone wants to be invited. But I wonder how much better it is when you have a party and it's really well attended. When, you, when, when someone retweets your stuff, likes your post, make you feel happy. If you hate not knowing, you look for answers. One of the themes is, is not knowing is painful. You ask a question of me, and I don't answer it. Whether it's, did you get a haircut? I'm not going to answer that. People say, what's your favorite number? I said, how do you count? I've, I've been told that if you don't answer questions, it makes people really frustrated. People need to know. They hate not knowing. So for extra credit tonight, I want you to write an essay. Five points extra credit. Do it or not. Five points summative. I've seen your test scores. You need it. Ready? Here's the essay question. The essay question is, does nothing exist? Yes. Does nothing exist? So, so what happened to the whole no extra credit? Are you frustrated because you don't know what I'm telling the truth? Okay, time out. Shut up or I will mock you. I will show you all a mirror and make you cry. If I gave you a frustratingly vague essay question on a frustratingly vague, maybe it'll count, maybe it won't. And I say, does nothing exist? And you say, well, how many pages? I say, I don't know. Had just double space? I don't know. Do I have to have references? I don't, I don't tell you. A lot of you are kind of like, wait, what? You're annoyed because you don't know. And now, if you still don't believe me, many of you all handed in your uh, outline. You submitted it two days ago. B, I wonder how many students were like flying tweets back and forth, messages in the blog. If you're like, I don't know, how was your essay? How many pages? Did you do this? Did you do this? How many of you all were like panicked? Because you didn't know what to do, so you checked in with all your friends. Raise your hand and be honest. Yeah. Oh, you didn't? You're a thug? Psh, I got this. I'm saying people hate not knowing. If you don't know what to do, you will look around for clues. Whether you're new in school, whether you don't know what to buy, whether you don't know how to act, you will conform. You will look for someone to tell you what to do. You look for someone to persuade you. This is a powerful concept. Go ahead. What is that actually an essay? I don't know. Really frustrating, yes? I don't know. Does nothing exist? Yeah. Let me throw this out at you. If you were to prove nothing exists, would you do it by writing? Are you frustrated because you don't know what to write and you don't know what to do right now? Point proven. You're still mad. You don't care about the point. You're just worried about the essay, which again proves the point. If you don't know what to do, it drives you up a banana tree. How many times have you ever tried to put something together try to get your computer to work and you don't know. So what do you do? You call your friend. You, call, you do anything you can. You hate not knowing. You know why you hate do this? Because thinking is hard. The very last thing we want to do is think. We'd rather copy, imitate, or be told what to do. Very few of us, I told you that assignment, does nothing exist. And the very first thing you did was ask me back. You did not think on your own. You did not think through. Well, what, what does he mean? What? It was very quick to say, well, what we're looking at is people hate not knowing, oh, but thinking's hard. So it's much easier to conform. It's much easier to obey. I'm not saying that's bad. I'm saying it's most cases very smart. You show me a child who doesn't obey, 
I'll show you a child that does not have a long future ahead of him. That's a fact. I think obedience might be an instinct, genetically bred into us. Show me a cave baby that's like, Mom, I ain't listening to you. I'll show you saber tooth tiger meal. We're going to write that down, and we're going to love it. The fundamental attribution error. It kind of, it's a complex thing. We're going to start with just two parts, and then we're going to make a chart. The first part says that human beings oftentimes blame people, or blame behavior on physical characteristics. You know what I'm talking about. I know we're not supposed to admit it, but most of us are racist. But I wouldn't be that way. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. It's not that kind of class. But I'll tell you what, I'll go first. I'm racist. But not the way some of you think, because I have my own way of being racist. All right? You know what? I don't care about skin color, eye shape, hair texture, number of freckles you have. But I'll tell you what, I hate certain blood types. <laughs> Is AB negatives? Mm -hmm. They should be kicked in the shins. Who, can, who knows what I'm talking about? They can't donate blood, can they? No, they're takers. As a result, we should treat them differently. Can I get an amen? amen. Thank you. All right, then. <laughs> Was that just really weird? So check this out. I know he said, well, you know how white people are. I was like, yeah, I know. Who just said I know? That's not right. <laughs> okay, so let's go back to this. The concept here, check out fundamental attribution error, simply means that you're going to blame behavior on skin color. You know how they are. You see someone acting badly. Look, people hate not knowing. So when someone's doing something that bothers you, playing their music loud or not doing this or doing that, you're like, oh, that's how they are. Country people with a big belt buckle and they're line dancing. You know how I am? Because they're white. Because <laughs> they're country. Because they're so notice, and this isn't bad. We need to put people in the groups because it comes back to I not knowing. We need to simplify the world. We got a six billion people in the world. We need to put them into groups, and we're going to find out that that group grouping can be good, can be bad. It's us and them. It's us and them. So we put people into groups, and oftentimes the groups are based on what we see. Is that bad? Probably, but it is actually normal. Next thing, number two, we view outgroup, which I call others. Go ahead. <coughs> Loud and proud, I can't hear you. <laughs> Still bothering you, isn't it? Do you hate not knowing? There's no yes. Check it out. We view outgroups. Notice, notice what I did here. Outgroup, O, others, O. In group, so what we're looking here, out group, is what we do with other people. And look, have you ever been to a sporting event where the, oh, those people, the fans, were just so freaking bad, like, oh, figures. You all are nodding. What? When you go to a sporting event, it's because there happened to be in a different zip code. The boundaries between schools are what? You crossed one line. Oh, well, now they're like that. It doesn't make sense. You're telling me. Fans from other schools are that different than you. Like Yeah. <laughs> Do you see the ridiculousness of what you're saying? Didn't Mean Girls show us this? This is pretty much what it is. And if you take this by the extension, on the micro level, it's clicks. On the macro level, it's called geopolitics. Our country, their country. We're not terrorists. We're freedom fighters. They're terrorists. The fundamental attribution error. Now, hold on, look, look, look. Before you start copying, we're going to make a chart. A really, really big chart. And the chart is going to have, I want like half a page chart. If you're at the end of your paper, pff, flip it over. Some of you worried about the trees. I don't like trees. They make driving harder. So I want a half page chart. What's that? No, oxygen tanks. Is it frustrating not knowing? You pick the class. If something good happens to you, walk around with a little swag, style and profile, and I earn that junk. Tell me you don't. If you got a good score yesterday, you're all walking around like, yeah, I got this class. Ah. But if something bad happened to you, you fail a test, mm, mm, mm. it's not fair. The referee was blind. The teacher, was, teacher didn't teach. The textbook sucked. The test was biased. 
Notice that we view situations differently. But this is a human thing. And you know what? I think this actually might be healthy. We don't want to view each other too honestly. We don't want to say, well, you know what? I failed the test. Holy crap, I do suck. I'm a bad person. Mom and dad wasted so much effort and money on me, they should have given up. No, you don't say that. If you do, run to your counselor, because that's not cool. It is normal and healthy. It is normal and healthy to view ourselves with a favorite bias. One more time. Something good happened to you, it's because you worked hard. You, maybe you still don't understand it. I swear to you, I was flipping through the channels and I came across like CMT. All right, that's the redneck station. Who knows what I'm talking about? All right then. CMT, the country station. That's how you gotta say it, country. So, they were interviewing some joker and he, he won the lottery. All right, my man was struggling, you know, because he had summer teeth, some in his mouth, some in his pocket. And he's like, well, you know what? Let this be an inspiration to the young, young folks, the youngsters. He said, I never gave up. I kept trying. And if you work hard, good things can happen. I'm like, what? You won the lottery. Ah, but notice what he did. He won the lottery and assumed he, he earned it. He worked hard because he had the right numbers. You see what I'm saying? Go ahead. My cousin does it. <laughs> did they? Did he earn it? No. no. Yeah. Yeah. He just got it. He got it. He got it. So he won the lottery. Okay. Oh. Never mind. I. You probably sense an anti-lottery bias in me. I'm not a big fan of the lottery. They don't sell lotteries in libraries, math departments, on universities. Where do they sell lottery tickets? Liquor stores. Okay. So check this out, boys and girls. If something good happens to other people, it's not fair. It was a situation. All right, have you ever heard Miley Cyrus sing? Yes. Is she good? Yeah. Really? Yeah. No. I don't watch him. She's bad. Yeah. Anyone know who her, her daddy is, speaking of rednecks? Billy Ray. Yeah. Captain Mullet. Everyone knows who he is. Yeah. Do you think she earned her fame just because she's the best singer out there? No. 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 Wait. No. I don't know. No. No. I'm wondering this. I wonder, I wonder if any of the Kardashians actually have talent. <laughs> yeah. I wonder how hard any of you work. Do any of you all think you have what it takes to be an NFL lineman? Oh, sorry, line person. So check it out. I'm willing to bet it's not fair. You were not born with certain genetic gifts. You were not born to parents who have a whole bunch of money and a whole bunch of connections. Is that why you're not going to get into Harvard? You're telling me that everyone who gets into Harvard isn't there because daddy paid a little extra? I'm willing to bet that many of you all look at a professional athlete. I could do that too if only what? If only you were a genius? If only you had a genetic gift? If only you had parents who sacrificed more than they've already have for you? It's not your fault? Hmm. Do you believe this? Uh, yeah. Okay, back. So is this like... If something good happens to somebody else that's like unrelated to you, or if somebody like got a promotion over you, yeah, like, they were lucky. They. But like, if you just saw somebody like who was a really good singer, but you don't sing at all, you're like, oh, I could do that. Sure. That doesn't make any sense. You know what? Why don't you next this just break down jealousy? Because this might apply if they do something, they have something you want. If someone took your spot at university, they got accepted and you didn't. They got the scholarship and you didn't. Like, oh, well, it's not fair because they went to that school. Their parents wrote that. Out. They had, you're, no one's going to blame themselves. Check this out. This is where it gets pretty dark. If something bad happens to someone else, it, they deserved it. This isn't right. This isn't good. But this is normal. Maybe it is a little bit good. I'll explain that in a second. If something bad happens to someone else, well, they deserved it. What do I mean by that? Well, if Barney, just world phenomenon, you don't even have to write it down because we're going to go in deep depth with it later. In about two seconds, we're going to write it down. If something bad happens to other people, it's because they deserved it. Look, Barney, Dora, and the Wiggles. Right, I know fruit salad, yeah. yummy, yeah. yummy. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. If something bad happens to someone else, we've learned back in the day from kindergarten, from the Wiggles, from Barney, that if you are nice, you take your vitamin, wash behind your ears, say your prayers, work hard, good things will happen to you. This is how we've been brainwashed into the way the world works. 
Work hard, good things happen. Be nice, good things happen. People believe the world's fair. We just talked about that. The Wiggles and Barney, Dora, they have all taught us. Along with this belief is the assumption that you get what you deserve. Whether it's karma, whether it's religion, God rewards those who are faithful. God punishes those with whom he is displeased. And bad things happen to bad people. We need this belief. Because it's scary to think that you mean bad things could happen to me? I'm a good person. If bad things could happen to me, well, what does that mean? I better take cover. I better give up. I better, if bad things can happen to anyone, why would you all finish your college degree? Why would you get a job? The company you get a job with could go out of business. Hmm. Why would you save your money? That bank could go out of business. If bad things can happen to anyone, that means we're not special. And we can't think about that. We have to think we're different than other people. You know what's really sad about this? Why don't you write down number five? Number five simply means this. Number five means we, aren't, we don't have to help anyone. We don't have to help anyone. I turn on the channel. I see some plague, famine somewhere else across the world. You know what I do? Click. I change the channel. I know it's not right. I know I should. But you know what? I look at them as different than me. They shouldn't have lived there. If they had democracy, well, then they wouldn't have this problem. I know it's not right, but it protects us. It protects us from feeling connected to everyone else. Notice that some textbooks, some professors call it the fundamental attribution theory. I call it an error because it's, it's biased thinking. It, it allows us to kind of fall into a trap and the trap will allow us to harm other people. Why would anyone ever harm someone else? Because they're not us. They're different. They don't think the way we do. Another way to look at this is called the self-serving bias. This is the source of all bullying. Nobody can sit there, no one's sane, by the way, and sit there and, and pick on someone. As you're thinking, let's see, I'm going to pick on this child. I'm going to torment this other person who feels the exact same thing I do, who's just like me. No, if you're going to bully someone, it's got to be different. They're one of them. They're a nerd. They're a geek. They're whatever. That's a powerful concept. Nobody can sit there and just be pummeling someone. Oh, I bet that hurts because I imagine what it's like for me to get hit. No one can do that. That's a, and if you can, you are weird, man. Get out of my class. I don't want you. You're scary. Let's look at this thing called ABC. Now, I've already dared you to break the rules, to not conform. Should we? Should we go a step further? Are we really ready to push the boundaries? I don't know. Three lines. And if you're scared, that's okay. That's okay. Maybe just start with two, two and a half. Don't bite off the whole three lines at once. And this is critical. As you write down affect, behavior, cognition, now you're like, why'd you pronounce it affect? That's a weird way. I want you to think of the word affection. Affection means emotion. So for right now, in parentheses next to affect, I want you to write down emotion. So check it out. We got our A, that's emotions. We got our B, we know what behavior is, and I think you know that cognition equals thinking. So if you don't know what cognition is, write down thinking. This is wild. So next time you ever get scolded, your parents say, think before you act. Look at them straight in the eye, and be like, I can't. And your parents are like, oh yeah? You're what, grounded? And you know, they react right away. Hey mom, before you grounded me, did you think of it? Or do you just act from emotion? Emotion, then behavior, then thought. This is powerful. Before you snuck that first warm beer out of daddy's little cabinet or daddy's little basement, some of you are like, yeah, how do you know? Oh, I know. All right, so my <laughs> point is simply this. Before you got drunk the first time, did you make a plan? Did you make a pros? Cons. Did you make an algorithm and flow chart? Well, if I have my first beer, then if. If I don't, did you do that? No, you didn't think. But you did act, you did behave. The behavior came from emotion. Were you curious, bored, scared you'd be left out? Emotion causes behavior. And then only then, I guarantee you, if I wanted to, I'd give you all a uh, homework assignment. Give me a half page on why it's okay to drink underage. Some of you could come up with a reason. I go, well, I could be drafted. I'm helping the economy. Uh, you know, you're just like making crap up. Notice that you did not think of any of those reasons before you did the behavior. First, it's emotion. 
You know what this means? This means you can never change anyone's attitude. Next to cognition, write down, you got thinking. Write down attitude. You can't change someone's attitude. Think of all the lectures you've ever been given. Did it ever change your attitude? No. You ever walk in someone's office or a bank and has inspirational posters? Achievement, you know, sorry, integrity. Those, yeah, my posters are fantastic. <laughs> if you don't believe me, why don't you, if you could read that poster above your head, please. Read it out loud, loud and proud. Go ahead. Always remember you were unique just like everyone else. So my posters are kind of spoof on that. But there's no such thing as a poster, a lecture. There's very few things that can ever change anyone's attitude. So how do we change attitude? I'll give you an example. What if I did this? Does anyone here really care if you're walking down, walking on campus or in the hallways and you see trash? No. Nah. How many times do you walk by it? Ew. Nothing's worse than like a ketchup packet or a squish grape. Like, ew. You know what I'm talking about. No one's ever stopped it and it doesn't bother you. I could lecture. I could have posters. We could have like an announcement, a public service. Like, Do it. It's our campus. Let's all band together. Like, Please, our campus. What if I did this though? We just finished our first test and some of you realize it's not golf. A low score is not good. <laughs> all right, so what if I said this? You actually want extra credit. All right, so I'll do it. We got a lot of weeks in this semester. Divide you all up. Everyone gets a week. And here's what you have to do. For one week, I want you to go up and down this hall. Nothing crazy. Just a push broom. Big, you know, the big jump. All right, six feet wide. Push broom up. Turn around. Come back. You got yourself a little pile of dust. Dust plain. Scoop it all up. Put it in the trash can and put the broom away. Take you, what, 10 minutes? Would you do that for a week if it would raise you one letter grade? Yes. Duh. Okay, so check this out. We're going to walk through Monday. You'll be doing it, but you're not, you're not, you know, I said people hate knowing not what to think. So you'll be all embarrassed, you know, you're pushing. <laughs> all right. <laughs> put this on back. Yeah. Four grade. I know, because you don't want people to think that about you. All right, so Tuesday, you're like, all right, all right, all right. Wednesday, you got your one hand in it. You're like, I got this broom one hand. <laughs> Thursday, you're like, yeah, you think you are it. Friday, you've done this. You might even do a little dance twirl at the end. You brush it up, you're all happy, and then right at the end, you look down the hall. Some joker's got Dorito, and then throws his bag on the floor. What are you going to say? I can say it Wow. Notice what different. Four minutes ago, I can rewind the tape. Four minutes ago, you're like, I don't care. Grape. You're like, ew, I don't care what the... Now it's different. Why do you care? Our grade was good. Were you really thinking of your grade? When I said, and someone threw your trash down, somebody was like, pick it up, you're all mad. Were you thinking of your grade? No. You were thinking because you invested the behavior. Once you do something, you own it. You like it. You still don't believe me. Let's see if you can find a problem with this statement. You can't do something for long and hate it. See, prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Now, while you're writing it down, I'm going to come up like this. Why didn't you want me to mess up your notes? OK, fair enough. How many of y'all are writing this down, and it's really annoying if I do that? OK, here we go. Go ahead. Oh. Okay, ready? Earthquake. <laughs> Seriously, you're getting upset, aren't you? Check it out. This kind of proves my point. How many of y'all hate taking notes? Really? I love taking notes. Love taking notes. Let's, <laughs> Let's just say what the students said. I love taking notes. Is that because you have to? See, I suggest, and here we go, we're going to annoy you because I'm going back up. Quit your crying. When I was growing up, we had to scratch on slate, right in mud. Once you take <laughs> notes. Wow. Did you just snort? You snorted, didn't you? Once you do a behavior, you think taking notes. Oh, I like taking notes. I go home all the day. I copy the phone book. <laughs> I'm suggesting lectures are never going to work. And I've done it. I had this young lad, and he's like, I'm not doing any work, stupid. So I'm thinking, you know what? I'm never changing his attitude. He's mad. And his anger is influencing his behavior. 
So I got to hit him on this leg. And it's like, come on, just do it. And I, All right. And I said, fine. I can see it's too hard for you. Someone like you, I'll give you something. Else. He was like, what do, what do you mean? See, I mean, Matt. <laughs> I said, well, it's not. It's no problem. It's no problem. You know, I mean, it's difficult. You know, it's got two syllable words and everything. You're just not ready for that. And he's like, what? And I said, well, look, I'll give you something that or maybe like a coloring book. He said, come on, just get it. I said, look, seriously, don't prove it. If you can't do it, there's no shame in it. I'll just get you something, you know, a little bit easier. I can do that. I said, come on. I said, give me that. So he wrote it down. And he's like writing mad. And he's like, here. I said, oh, rip. I ripped it right up. He said, what'd you do? I said, I thought you didn't care. He only cared after he did the work. That's some powerful stuff. Pack it up, I guess. You guys are packing it up. Is that what you all are doing? Is that my cue? How much time we got? Like five minutes. How many? Five minutes. One minute. We can still be running. Yeah. Oh my God! Tell me the teacher. Why are you muttering to yourself? <laughs> You don't think I'm allowed to use alternative teaching methods? 